Um, we got a fun show for you today. Uh, one of the first things we're going to talk about um, is poker players on reality TV. Yeah. And there's uh, been a lot of them. There's been a lot of them. Um, my favorite reality show, mm-hmm. maybe the only one I watch, uh, is Survivor. Mm-hmm. And poker players have historically yeah. been awful at Survivor. A game about reading people. Yeah. And <laughs> strategy? I don't really know much about the show, honestly. Mm-hmm. But I know uh, JRB didn't fare too well, which... <laughs> <laughs> JRB th- wasn't someone that I looked at and was like, I think he could survive on his own on an island for 30 days. <laughs> yeah. Like when he's getting a massage 100% of his life. <laughs> yeah. I was like, can you bring a masseuse to the island with him? I think he would do okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, But mostly uh, I wanted to talk about Ronnie Barda because he was just on season 39 of Survivor. And uh, I don't think this counts as a spoiler since this will probably air about a week or so, uh, maybe two weeks after he already has been booted. But he was the first one off. Boo. Yeah, that is very sad. He's one of my good friends. Um, He had me on the list of like references to call because he was like super hyped to be on the show and they did like crazy background checks. Really? Yeah. And they like call a bunch of friends and family. So they called you? No. Well, I was I was actually away and didn't answer my phone. I was like doing a little in the woods vacation as I as I tend to do and missed the call. And I was freaking out because I got back and I saw a missed call from L.A. And I'm like, I'm ruining my friend's chances. And I called back and like didn't know the extension. And thankfully he got on anyway. But uh, I bet he wishes he didn't. (laughs) crazy so how does that work i mean that he just like you just like submit and then they just they get thousands and thousands of submissions yeah and they pick 20 people per season so it's like super hard to get on the show um some people have been on the show have been like well it's my 20th year uh submitting or whatever or like 20th time like they they do two, two per year jesus um yeah so it was like opportunity of a lifetime and uh this is the fourth poker player that they've had on it. Mm-hmm. Um, they had uh, Garrett Edelstein, who oh, actually yeah. also got kicked out super early. Ugh. He actually got kicked off. I would off. thought he would crush, too. I would thought, they keep having people that I think would crush, and they just get ravaged. Um, Garrett's season, he was, I think, the second one from his tribe voted out. And he actually got voted out before a girl who freaked out and burned all of the, the tribe's food. <laughs> so he didn't survive past that girl. So I know he was like embarrassed about his oh, show. Um that's it's so just, funny. Because poker players have like strong personalities a lot. And like yeah. you are better off on that show yeah. just being a fly on the wall and kind of chilling. Mm. And yeah, and like I think Ronnie got burned because he was trying to strategize from the start instead of trying to make friends. Mm. He was like, oh, everyone likes this one lady. Let's get her off the show because she might win. And everyone's like, why are you trying to vote off the threat already? This is where you're supposed to just like vote off the person who's making you guys weak, like maybe someone who's not athletic. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the fourth one, uh, Anna yeah. Kate and uh, JRB, the other one. <laughs> Crazy. I don't think anyone's made it past like 15 players. Yeah. yeah. And we suck. Yeah. We <laughs> suck. And there's been other shows too, Maria Ho and... Um, Tiffany Michelle. Yeah. They got voted off Amazing Race. or It's not a voting thing. I don't really watch that show, but you have to yeah. compete in challenges. And I think if you are like the last team coming, uh, it's like a race each mm-hmm. time. Um, for the last team, I think you get cut. So I think they were one of the first ones out too. Um, yeah. But we had talked about how sometimes poker players who, or actually people who do well on reality TV, who transition to poker end up crushing, like Kevin Martin. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Mm-hmm. Kevin Martin, for those of you who don't know, if, correct, me from, correct me if I'm wrong, he's Poker Stars Pro? Or, uh, no? I think he moved to Party Poker. I, like, party do poker. you know there's like a mass exodus from Poker yeah. Stars to Party Poker? Okay. Uh, yeah, because I think Poker Star is sort of okay. wrapped up their uh, online team. Oh, okay. And okay. then Party Poker is like, we'll take those guys. Okay, so he was a sponsored pro for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and has recently retired from poker. Yeah. But I didn't realize before that he had one big brother for like what? Like, what I think is that? it's like a million dollars. That's I insane. I think. Uh, I have only watched a couple episodes when Vanessa Russo was on. And I like yeah. didn't get into the show that much. I was like, eh, this isn't my thing. That's but yeah, cool. he's done well after that show. So yeah. Um, Something kind of interesting, uh, Run It Up Reno is in a couple weeks. We're both going to go to it. Yeah. Um, Somerville was one of the people who started the whole trend of like, oh, let's recruit some of these reality stars and get them to play poker. And mm. he would give them an entry to the main or like hook up some rooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and he loved Survivor. So he had like a big Survivor watch party and invited a bunch of former Survivor contestants to come play. And cool. uh, it's a tradition now that like five or six of them come to every single Run It Up Reno and just like mix with the 
other players. It's pretty cool. Mingle with the locals. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. They, you know, some of them have money. They have a bankroll. They're good at strategies. You know, yeah. they they probably don't have a job anymore. <laughs> yeah, if they you might leave. not have a girlfriend anymore. <laughs> they say, hey, I have no girlfriend and I don't need to work. So I got all this money laying around. I kind of wonder about that every time I'm watching. Like, I really only watch Survivor, but I'm just like, yeah. how do you just go, hey, a uh, law firm that I work at, I'm just going to be gone for a month to two months. Yeah. Just all these clients, you guys wrap them up. And then if you're like in a relationship, you're like, hey, um, I'm going to go hang out and sleep in a tiny hut with a bunch of hot girls. Uh, yeah. Is that cool? Like, I'll probably be single when I come back. Like, you probably really do throw away a lot of things in your life when you go on these shows. Definitely. Sounds awesome. I, mean, I, I have nothing going on. I have, no, I have nothing going on. So for that? me, it would be easy. Yeah, well, Chauncey, would his heart would be broken if you left. I know. <laughs> Chauncey's my cat, for those of you who don't know. Um, sorry, I have, I have allergies, too. But, um, yeah, poor Chauncey. I actually woke up this morning. Chauncey had a full-grown pigeon in my hallway. Side note, not poker-related at all. But, uh, yes, I dealt with that this morning. That's cool. But uh, back, back to Survivor. Um, <laughs> would you ever do a reality TV show? I would love to be on Survivor. But I always really? talk about it, and I've never submitted a video, so I'm just all talk. I have all these strategies and like uh, when I watch a show, I'm like, oh, this guy should have done that. That girl should have done that. And I'm like, but I didn't even submit a video. So who the fuck am I to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's the same thing as people watching live streams and chiming in with their For sure. stage advice. It's like, dude, it's not as easy as it looks. I would never last in any of those shows because I'm the least athletic person you'll <laughs> ever meet. I just can't. I'm just not a I can't rough it. I hate nature. <laughs> I hate camping. <laughs> I, I hate, hate nature I hate every part of it yeah. I like looking at it from the inside mm -hmm. I admire its beauty I could paint it maybe but I don't want to just be like living in it for days on end and it's I understandable just... like air conditioning is pretty cool not yeah. getting bug bites also awesome we talked yeah. about rabies this morning uh, don't Ra watch videos about rabies guys this is Marley's never going outside again Right? I'm, well, I'm just, just terrified because I have like dead car animal carcasses <laughs> in my house every day from my cat. And, you know, then of course, like, you know, he nips me. You just never yeah. know. I just feel like I'm going to be foaming at the mouth one day. So this might be like I'm four so of four podcasts. We might be done after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's been fun. And it always makes me think of the episode of The Office where they do the, the rabies walk. <laughs> That show is so good. Oh, uh, it's so fucking good, man. Um, just to try to wrap all our reality thing into poker. Um, Run It Up recently just did that uh, chat plays poker. Did you see any of that? Chat gets to, because chat would always be, Twitch chat would always say like, what? oh, I could play this better. Like, look what this idiot's doing or whatever. So they actually let chat control the decisions for one seat at a table and they played for charity. <laughs> And did the chat automatically like auto punt or did they? I don't try know because like I was busy and I didn't get to watch it, so okay. I'm gonna watch the video. It's a good later. idea. I think it's really funny because people would always say like, "Oh, you chat pro, whatever," like like a backseat driver, and yeah, it's great that they're letting them actually play because it's like, see, what if they win every day? We'll be like, "Oh my god, they're right." <laughs> but how does that work? Because there's multiple people chiming in. I think they're voting. Like I think oh, that's okay. they vote Consensus. on what to do. But I'm only, like, I'm imagining it. I haven't yeah. seen, I saw, like, 10 minutes of it. That'd be a good idea for a streamer to do that, just pick a lucky person. And <laughs> so they play, like, a super low stakes, right? They play, like, a $10 tournament. Mm -hmm. And, like, this one person controls, you get to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how that would work, but it's kind of a fun idea. <laughs> if I ever have a lot of money to punt, I'll let some chat person control my Yeah, guy. exactly. <laughs> this is uh, good problems to have. <laughs> yeah. Um... So we are going to have a segment uh, every time that we can sucker someone into actually joining us. Um, we're going to try to have as many run at once pros as possible, uh, calling in and giving us a punty hand. And we're super lucky that this week we actually have Chris Kruk calling in. Uh, and Chris is, Chris is someone who doesn't usually want to talk poker. He's too good and doesn't want to share his secrets. <laughs> but um, I have some blackmail uh, hanging over his head. So he's going to have to share with us. Yes, we... <laughs> Roped him in, so he's got yep. a great, punty, delicious hand for us to dissect. We're going to actually give him some advice for once. I <laughs> yeah, don't think I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to improve his game a lot. I've got a few uh, things to tell him. i got a few things to tell him. Um, sweet. So uh, let's That'll take be a later break on. real yeah. quick, and we'll give him a call. Yeah. All right. All right. Hi. Uh, we have Chris Kruk on the phone. How's it going, Chris? Hey, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Doing um, good. You're multi-tabling while you chat with us? 
Uh, it's down to one now. Down yeah, to one. Okay. I was previously. Yeah. That's that's a, enough attention for us. I was like, you know yeah. what? I'm happy he's even here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even a distracted it's, version. It's actually more about it's it's more attention for him is really what's up. It's enough more than enough for him. Okay. It speaks more about the other guy <laughs> than about anything to do with this podcast. So you got you got a fish on the line, is what you're saying? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think so. It's hard to tell when you're just getting smashed. So. Oh, <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe it's me. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll turn it around while you're on the podcast, and then you're going to have to be obligated to be here every week. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's a fair deal. Cool. So uh, cool. so we've been talking on Twitter um, about your punty hand. Do you want to describe this hand to the viewers? Sure. Yeah, so... as uh, as Jamie was saying, we were we were discussing on Twitter, um, having like a just confess confession essentially yeah. for like <laughs> the, the most punty hand that you've played, and um, unfortunately, I like immediately knew exactly what hand that was. <laughs> um, so this hand happened about two years ago, I guess, and um, <clears throat> at the time I was mostly playing tournaments, but uh, I would just go like goof around in five hundred Zoom sometimes. So this is a 500 zoom hand uh, against the, a reg, but I don't remember what reg it is. And uh, we're maybe like 340 big blinds deep or something like that. It's a couple of years ago, so I don't remember exactly. But uh, yeah, so it's 2.5 and we're like, I don't know, 1,700 bucks deep. And um, I opened Queen Jack suited in under the gun and this guy calls the cutoff and the blinds fold. So there's like... 28 bucks in the pot or something and uh it comes jack six deuce rainbow and i check and he checks back and the turn is a seven complete the dookie, like complete rainbow on the turn still and um i think i make like a small over bet like i bet like 120 percent pot so it's like 32 dollars into 27 and he like pot raises so that's like maybe $120, $130. Um, so, I mean, immediately, like, my conscious brain is trying to do all the, like, good things, you know, and be like, all right, like, where are we in our range? You know, we potted. What's our potting range look like? He raised pot. How much of my range do I have to defend? Blah, blah, blah. But, like, the unconscious part of my brain is, like, you know, there's just, like, alarm bells going off, and it's just, like, this motherfucker has seven, you know? <laughs> like... So I'm like already pretty sure this guy has sevens, but uh, my conscious part decides that we're not folding it. Maybe he has eight nine, maybe a ten nine, maybe he has like even seven eight, and he's running a bluff. Although that'll be a cold day in hell, but you know maybe. So I call, and now there's like two hundred and sixty dollars in the pot or something, and uh, the river is a deuce carrying the board, and I check obviously, and he like goes just barely into the time bank and pops it. And once again, you know, my conscious brain is like, all right, like, you know, analyze this spot. What do we do here? Blah, blah, blah. And I decide that I definitely get to fold some, but I probably have to call a little bit of Jack X. And uh, I think there's actually some raises um, repping, you know, Jack full. So that's sort of what I decide. But, you know, in the back of my head, I've still got this, like, alarm going off, being like, this guy has seven full. This guy has seven full. And then I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, he probably does have seven full. But, like, what's he going to do if I just put 1700 in, you know? Yeah. So I'm yeah, like, all right. No like, money whatever. in the pot before the turn. So you're like, well, this is such a tiny pot. Like, you know, you said there's 28 <laughs> bucks in on the turn. So you're like, all right. If somehow I put 1700 in by the river, like, this guy has to give me Jack's full, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um... I decide, like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be too out of line. I need to, like, carefully decide when to put $1,700 into a $28 pot. <laughs> so I roll my R&D like a good, you know, like a good bot, and I roll 99. So now, you, now like, Can you explain what, that to, to the people at home who don't really uh, randomize? Can you explain just real quick what you mean by rolling a 99? Sure. So when you need to use mixed strategies, um, people frequently use randomizers and what it is is essentially you can just go to like random.org or something and you, you click a button and it randomly generates a number for you and that way when you have to mix decisions you're not just um, pseudo randomizing by picking your own numbers because that would uh, 
open you up to having a tendency, right? If you're an aggressive player, you would like decide to roll 99 more often than like one in 100 times. Yeah. And if you're a passive player, you would roll, you know, three more frequently than three in 109. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, it stops you from uh, introducing your own biases into the game, potentially. So, um, yeah, so I roll 99. And uh, I decide that <laughs> I, had, I thought there was probably something like 2% shove. And mm-hmm. like now I rolled top 1%. So, I mean, there's just no decision, really, you know? <laughs> so, I just go all in for 1,700, and obviously he has seven full, and obviously he calls. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's how you put, you know, I don't know, whatever, 40 times the pot in over two streets <laughs> into, like, what you know is middle boat. Um, Happens. Yeah, um, and then, I mean, it was just, it was, like, really infuriating, because I knew what he had, and I tried to bluff him anyway. Mm-hmm. So, I started showing it to some friends. As I said, I was playing tournaments at the time, and um, I sent the hand to people, but like I um, like whited out the river action because I wanted to like ask about the turn, and then like when they answered, I would I would um, like show them what he does on the river, and then ask again. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> a couple people were like, "Hey, man, like I think you sent me the wrong hand. You know, there's just like <laughs> whatever. There's like no money in this spot. I think like you know you sent the wrong hand." <laughs> So that, that like stung a little. And then um, when we get to the river, all the tournament guys I'm talking to are like, hmm, it really just comes down to like, you know, how often does this guy bluff versus how often does this guy have seven full? Like he probably just has seven full, but you know, you have a pretty good bluff catcher and like you should probably call him sometimes. And uh, you don't have any of the like eight, nine, ten cards. So they're not even so, like, considering that you may have just check no. jammed the server. No. They're just like, okay, yeah, you can either call or fold. Either one's reasonable here. And you're like, what right. about the other option? <laughs> I was going to ask you, right. are, you so random- are you randomizing between call or jam or fold and jam? All three. All three, okay. Because I was like, yeah. I thought maybe it was just like a fold or jam kind of situation, but um, I guess, I don't know, maybe. Call more seven with the, six, yeah. Come more like that and have to, yeah. yeah. Bluff, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a fun hand. So I like the one too. What, like how you had mentioned to me that you told an elite player this hand, and that they kind of <laughs> oh. it gave you an answer that you weren't sure if they were just placating you or if they were agreeing with you or if they're just like <laughs> what the hell they were saying. Yeah. So I, I sent it to like some some mid stage guys, and they we're sort of trying to decide between call or fold on the river, as I was saying. And, um, one guy, one, and then I like said, you know, one guy, like why not raise? And he's like, well, like either has seven full or he has a bluff. So like, if you go all in, you're just like losing more money against seven full. And like, you still just beat his bluffs anyway, but you can just do that for much cheaper by calling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, these aren't the answers I want. Like, fuck (laughs) that. You know, I need to go, I need to go in like straight to the top. So I like messaged like pretty much the best player I know. And I was like, Hey man, I got a hand for you. And I like run it by him. And, uh, he's like, Oh, so like on the river, like he gives me the like seven soul thing and he doesn't even consider going all in. And I'm like, okay, what about all in? And he's like, Oh, I kind of like it. Like, you know, sometimes you just have to rep top boat. And I'm like, even if you have, even if you like know they have middle boat and he's like, yeah, man, even if you know they have middle boat, and I'm like, okay, like now we're getting somewhere, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I so love like, doing so what that. happened? I'm like, wow. Well, I, yeah, I, exactly. I, love, I love going to the one friend that I know will agree with it. Like, I, I purposefully do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, I would go to Croc. Yeah. <laughs> if I was like, hey, I just punted the stack. You want to hear how? Like, there will be no judgment. You'll just be like, well, that's, you know, you might be like, hey, that's fucking awful. But you're still my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that bad. I, I, I love that. Friend. Can't be that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he says, uh, yeah, like, you know. What are you going to do? You got to keep them honest. And I'm like, okay, great. So I feel like pretty good about this conversation, you know? And then I hang up and like a few minutes later, I'm thinking about this because like this hand's still like eating me alive, obviously. And uh, I'm just thinking like, he's married. And I'm thinking like, is his wife standing there going like, what are you doing? Like giving that guy this like horrible information. And he's just sitting there like, no, honestly, honey, like sometimes you just need to like keep him in line. And, or is he just sitting there like, look, don't worry about it, babe. Like he can only do it when he rolls 99. He can't hurt himself that badly. Just let him fuck it. You know, like, and he just got his like hand in his head. Like, can't believe what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm not sure is the honest answer. So yeah. 
That's my hand. I also like it. Uh, I like asking many, many people until you get one person who tells you it's okay. Yeah. I like doing that too. And someone's like, that's awful. That's awful. I'm like, if I ask enough people, eventually someone will be like, that's a really cool line you took. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like we should take lessons from Booby Miles, who does that in Friday Night Lights and re tears his ACL. Oh, that's, that's cool. <laughs> nice reference. It's been a minute since I watched that Thank show. You. Um, Thank you. Well, that's a very good hand. I like how your punts aren't like, I just got, my punts are always like, oh, God, I just was going through something personal and I just saw red <laughs> and I don't know what happened. Somehow I was just shoveling <laughs> chips in the pot. Yours are like, well, the randomizer said. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. his punts are like semi-robotic. R- logical. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if it's actually better because, you know, all the mid stakes guys were right. Right. I mean, he just like, Maybe it's not the most sophisticated analysis, but they were all right. It's just me and the other guy who plays high stakes being like, nope, sometimes you just have to lose 1,700 more here for absolutely no reason, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you ever looked back? Did you, when you first started playing, so you were younger, um, did you post on Pocket Fives or 2 Plus 2? Did you ever post hand histories for people to review? Um, a, a little bit. So when I started, um, started in 2013, and I didn't really know about pocket like any of those communities to be honest i just played on my laptop mm-hmm. and uh after about a month a rag messaged me and like got me into a skype group and i found out like about all these things um <laughs> but there was only maybe like four guys in this group and i thought like oh what a great idea like if four is better than none maybe 20 is better than four you know yeah, so i posted on two plus two with a graph of my 500 zoom being like hey you know like i'm uh winning at 12 big blinds over 300,000 hands and like I need some friends and people thought I was just troll like I, I got a lot of hate because they thought I was joking like yeah. they thought it was some guy that was like trying to bait people in and troll them who was like actually playing high stakes and I had no idea because I had never played anywhere else before I just thought like everybody won at 12 big blinds and I was just like <laughs> some some random guy and had no idea that it was good until you know years later when now I don't win a 12 BB anymore. <laughs> yeah. So they probably thought like you have some fake graph trying to make a brag post or something mm-hmm. and you're like, no, I'm just trying to prove I'm credible so that you guys will talk to me about poker. <laughs> yeah. I I actually just like ended up friends with like three guys who played NL10 or whatever who are pretty much like, well, if he's trolling, it's three minutes of my life and yeah. if he's right, this is going to be awesome. Exactly. And They're all like, the mid guys not... just like didn't bother. They're... Yeah. If you're not trolling, then they're getting free coaching, pretty much. Yeah, so I was in two groups. The one that, like, the guy, the 500 Zoom guy had invited me to, and then one with, like, three guys who played 10 NL. And those were my two, like, poker groups for the first first while. That's crazy, though. So you were, like, crushing before you had anybody to really bounce hands off of, so you are pretty much self, totally self-taught. And that's awesome. Yeah, I just watched the... Uh, watched a ton of card runners videos really cool what i guess i shouldn't story. say that now <laughs> <laughs> i think they're i think we're they're just, gone though right like i think they, so i think like, we're just gonna bleep it out and put run it once videos over that part yeah <laughs> 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 but yeah. Phil knows, right i mean i've worked for all the competitions either work or signed up for all the competitions you know so gotcha and now uh for anybody who is watching and listening and Loves to hear the Cruxter's voice. Um, you make a, pun- a bunch of videos for Run It Once now, right? Yeah, I do. I make uh, tournament videos. I watched. Um, uh, I watched some of your videos uh, last night just to brush up. I've seen your videos before, but um, I really liked them. It was. I watched one about the main event final table going through some hands yeah it was cool it was a cool setup how you got his thought process and then i liked um i like how you don't i like how you're patient and you know i would just be very like nope wrong or like disagree (laughs) and you're like oh i see your point but maybe another way to think about it i'm like wow like that's how you have a nice dialogue (laughs) yeah and uh by twitter dm it doesn't work like that Uh, i send croc a hand he's like nope (laughs) (laughs) that's wrong (laughs) but i don't mind that either like it's okay i feel like it's only personal there are certain people who think like 
if you're bad at poker, you're like not a worthwhile human being. Yeah. Like, there are definitely some people in poker who like judge uh, their friends and stuff by how good they are, what stakes they play or whatever. Um, but I feel like it's super easy to take uh, objective poker advice from someone when it like doesn't affect the way they think about you at all. They're like, oh, you're a worthwhile person to talk to. You happen to have a very, very fucked up this hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's like not a big deal. And like I can take criticism from those people when it's like doesn't feel as personal. It's just very objective. Mm hmm. Totally. Um, I have a funny story for you, Chris. Um, obviously, I, you know, I, I, we never met, but I've known of you and whatever for, you know, years. And I've met and, you know, hung out with Ozzy Matt a handful of times. And in my mind, I always thought that he was Chris Crook. <laughs> And you I know, I, you guys are <laughs> practically the same person. I literally thought that that was you. I thought, I thought that was Chris Crock for, for and I think that it was because it's, it's Kirk and Crook. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but for some yeah. reason, I, I literally thought that was you forever until until a couple months ago. So now I know who you really are. And I'm glad that we uh, unofficially met finally. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually two very funny mix ups with that. One time somebody messaged me on Skype who I hadn't talked to in like, four years or something. And they were like, Hey, do you think we could get Leon's contact info from you? And I was like, what? And he's like, no, no, it's okay. Like you don't have to like be whatever, like sneaky with us. We know like you're good friends with Leon and you're working together. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> what are these rumors going around? You know, like, I'm like, can I ask like who told you this? Because like, this isn't happening. And this is like, you know, moderately alarming. Um, I've never even met him. Well, I mean, I played, he, he busted me in a tournament one time, but I haven't really met him, like, at all. And um, they're like, look, we can't, like, talk about it or whatever. And I'm like, okay, like, what the fuck is going on? And two days later, they messaged me. I had, a, like, a flight, so I, I just, like, was gone and was sort of, like, this was just, you know, stewing in my brain for a while. And two days later, they messaged me, and they're like, oh, sorry, we, we thought you were Ozzy Matt, but we fucked it up. No Our way. bad. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay i'm not the only one. Oh my god that's just so funny to me because i, I mean i don't know ozzy that well i only know him from watching him on tv pretty much on like, streams but i can't think of a more opposite acting human being than you like no. ozzy matt is not like well i rolled a 99 so we're gonna put it in here he's the guy who's like i'm stuck yeah a million, but he just only rolled 99 exactly <laughs> he always he self he does the self-randomization method he's like 99 again all right a friend of mine calls those the gretzky dice what is the what? It? which i think is one of the the Gretzky, Gretzky dice. dice. Like the Copper Wayne Gretzky. I yeah. like that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Um, so what do you have on the horizon? Give us your little, uh, like, two-minute, what's your next month or two look like? Are you moving to Vegas yet? <laughs> I'm trying. No, no. Um, <laughs> I think I might I might just stay home and play online for a little bit and then um, go back to Vegas in, like, maybe November to play the Bobby's Room mix. Mm -hmm. um, and it's possible I'll go to London before then, but I sort of do these things last minute and um, frequently book them on book. So at the moment, I have flights in a hotel for Tuesday, but that's potentially going to change up to a couple of times between now and then, I think, cool. <laughs> depending on what's happening online mostly. All right, well, I'll yeah. keep looking for real estate in the area and let you know. <laughs> There's actually a couple extra okay. bedrooms here in her house. So. Pretty true, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm trying to do that. I've been trying to just collect my friends in a little commune here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Maybe eventually we'll have Cruxter here actually on the couch teaching us how to play poker. Yeah. But Crouton, well, like, isn't that Crouton's couch? Yeah, he literally feel like he's got yeah, some, he some just say in this. walked up and sat between us like 30 seconds before you said that. Yeah. He knew you were about to give away his couch yeah. and he was like, Mom? <laughs> He's like, dips. What the fuck? Yep. <laughs> um, well, this has been awesome. Thank you for being our first guest. Thank you for sharing your punt with us. I mean, I feel like you could do better. <laughs> like that, you could have conceivably, conceivably won money in that hand, so we want we want a little better for next time, but we appreciate you nonetheless. I think if it's a punt, though, can you actually win? <laughs> Like, no, don't you, like don't punts have to be caught by definition almost. i guess so yeah yeah they're better if they i guess it would still be a punt if he folded and it was awful it turns out <laughs> um but, it's but always, nobody would ever know 
That's yeah. true. Because I'd just be like, yeah, I'm the sickest. He folded seventh hole and just like pat myself on the back and like walk off and never think about it again, you know? Yeah, yeah that's true. All right. Well, how about you light some money on fire and let us know how it goes? <laughs> okay, don't worry. There's been, there's been plenty of them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for having me, guys. Right. Bye. Bye. And don't forget to check out Run It Once Poker, where you can sign up through once.run slash play and receive 100% deposit bonus up to 600 euro. You also get 51% rake back through their in-game reward system, Splash the Pot. All right, so this is going to be a segment we're going to do ongoing uh, called Good for Poker, Bad for Poker. We're going to talk about some current events that went down, some changes in the poker industry, and discuss are they good or are they bad? So this first one we're going to talk about is uh, the chopping becoming, uh, what's the word? Uh, facilitated. Facilitated, yeah. So yeah, um, Matt Savage, uh, tournament director, very well respected, and someone who is very much on the internet. He is on Twitter, he's asking for advice, he's asking for suggestions, and he had polled people a while back about um, how they feel about chopping at the end of tournaments. Because mm-hmm. uh, historically, WPT had advertised no chopping. We don't facilitate it. We don't allow it. Um, we want our like WPT Player of the Year award points to be totally like if you've won the tournament outright, you get the points. And if not, you mm-hmm. don't. Um, so that had been the standard for a long time, I think, since WPT has been started. Uh, and then just recently, about a week ago, we put a poll out and a post saying that they're going to start facilitating chops in jurisdictions that allow it. So certain states still, like casinos, don't let you do it. But um, yeah, it's a big thing for tournament players who, you know, have said for a long time, it's our money, we're buying into this tournament. If we want to split it up, we're the only two people left. Mm. Me and you decide we want to split this money up. Uh, It's kind of weird to have the tour say, no, we won't allow you to do that with your own money. And to have to kind of trust that person to do a handshake and it yeah. is a little bit less glamorous, I have to admit, to have it on TV and not have the winner and the, you know, the whole thing. Even though I think we all know that. What percentage of people do you think actually do chop? You think it's... That's what was weird. It, it's pretty high. Having done commentary on mm-hmm. WPT Final Tables, um, I know there are some where I'm like, this hand history can't be real. Like, these yeah. people are trying to have one person win over the other because mm-hmm. they've decided, they've done a chop, whatever. Um there's been some weirdness like that. So I do think that chops were happening and they were happening just behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, but that puts players at risk. Uh, there's a couple things that happen there. One, say you and I don't even know each other. Um, we end up getting to the to heads up in a WPT playing for hundreds of thousands well, it, of dollars. Which is, you know, probably and likely, we yeah. take a 15 minute break and yeah. we just go like, all right, I trust you. It's not like you have a lawyer there writing you a contract. No. You just have a text message being like, sure, uh, I'll hand you 40K at the end or like winner's going to take uh, 40K off the top and give it to you. Um, whatever. And that was like a little bit dicey. I didn't hear of any um, deals going bad uh, mm-hmm. from that, but I know the potential's there. As a former lawyer, I'd be like, I would not want to have a handshake agreement, <laughs> bless you, Thank you, over that much money. Um, Definitely. I mean, I think poker so much is of it is handshake agreement thinking about staking deals selling action every they go time bad a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's so crazy that still like there's nothing really in place to regulate it mm-hmm. and there's no we're not protected and everything is so kind of honor system in this industry and it's so crazy because money moves around so quickly and you know i've actually chopped tournaments you know the orleans friday night tournament don't want to brag deal. I yeah. don't want to brag about it, but I did chop for first uh, two ways, and it was just a handshake. And I was worried about my five hundred dollars that I might never see again. But thankfully, you know, it probably is more likely to go down like that in yeah. a smaller buy-in where people are slightly shadier. Um, yeah. I actually had a situation like that happen in a small tournament too. This was a while ago. It had to be like seven years ago or so at the Taj in Atlantic City, where like you can expect this to happen. Yeah, um, in Atlantic City, I, I believe. For yeah, sure. it was yeah. a two hundred dollars Saturday tournament. Um, it got a pretty big field and we were down to, I think, six or seven players. Mm-hmm. And we we're like, hey, you want know, to pay the bubble? And of course, the tournament's small. So everyone's like, yeah, like you tend to find people who want to like make sure they don't go home with zero. So we all agree that um, first was top heavy. We're going to take just $500 off of the whatever it was, 10K or so first prize mm-hmm. and pay the bubble boy. So this poor guy 
bubbles and he's like oh well at least i make 500 he yeah. sat there and waited us waited for us to play out the final table i want to say over an hour he's just oh, sitting there so waiting for the money um and he we, waited it was awful we <sighs> all end up getting paid the guy who took first place takes the money sprints out the door and runs down the boardwalk <laughs> i like, mean it was horrifying we are watching in horror as this guy just won 10k from 200 dollars and says i am not giving 500 i am sprinting down the boardwalk the fact that he physically ran away makes it hilarious it was hilarious but, but awful but so sad and i would have paid that poor guy we ended up giving like yeah. each person gave like 50 but he didn't get as much as he was supposed to get because we're like well that sucks the, the guy who gets waited. six is making Ugh. like eight hundred dollars he doesn't want to give the guy a hundred yeah so we each paid a little bit and the guy got some money but i was like this is so shitty um and can you imagine if that happened for hundreds of thousands it, yeah. when they don't facilitate a chop i feel like it it's a possibility and one that doesn't need to be there yeah so i think savage is getting it right i think um yeah maybe a tiny bit of glamour is taken away where it's not huge amounts of money for first and oh my god they're playing a 250k heads up sit and go right mm -hmm. now um but the money's usually so big in wpts that i don't think like too much shine is being taken off it by allowing chops we know it's i mean we know it's happening I, I think that it happens more often than you think i'm always like torn about shopping in general i don't play very many tournaments and besides the friday night at orleans i don't have that many titles but um <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know i always feel like i wouldn't chop because i always feel like I know it's awful because, you know, it's just so hard to get there. But I say go for it. It's my theory. I, th I think so, too. I think for, mo for the most part, like when you're heads up in a WPT, you are making so much money at that point. Like these tournaments are huge. Mm -hmm. Buy-ins are big and the fields are huge that I don't know if I would like care that much. After the fact, I'd be like, oops, I should have chopped for that extra Mercedes. You yeah, know, like, yeah, well, yeah. you're really thinking about how much money it actually is. But if you're making 300K or you're making 450K, like in that moment, I think I'd just be like, whatever. I just like, I'm so happy with this amount that like, let's just go for the win. Yeah. But people who are more reasonable, who've been playing poker for a long time and understand variants better, like do tend to go like, hey, why are we playing a 150K sit and go? Like, yeah. are you a heads up, sit and go pro? I'm not either. Like, why don't we just chop this up or whatever? And the edge usually obviously isn't even that big. You know, mm -hmm. even if it's the biggest recreational and the biggest pro, even if it's me and the biggest recreational, mm -hmm. that big of a scale, the difference. <laughs> like, <laughs> then I, I don't even think I have that much edge, really. You know, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's tough. I can understand like, and also, but it's the players, right? And like, I understand too, when people don't want to chop, I've, I played heads yeah. up. This is the most ridiculous thing. Um, I have an 08 title, which is just so fucking, it's fucking ridiculous. Omaha 8. That's oh. what I am. I'm like, what's that? Like when I played the tournament, I was like, what is As this? 2008. Um, and <laughs> this guy and I, uh, who, who both of us could not have deserved it less. Um, he was also a no limit player and we knocked out all the real players and then we're like yeah. heads up for three hours. Neither <laughs> of us know what the hell is going on. We're, we're turning over our cards being like, do I get this pot? And the dealer's like <laughs> trying to figure it out. Um, that's how bad we were. And neither of us still would chop. We wanted to win so bad. And it was, was like, what was like the, it was like 27 K or something like that for first. Um, that's, that's it was big. awesome. I mean, listen, I have hit and run the 08 community for 27 K. They're not getting it back. Wow. <laughs> like I'm never giving that money back. Uh, I felt like I got away with murder at that time. I literally was tearing up from happiness because of how little I deserve that money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but even then that's I wouldn't awesome. chop. Like he and I are both like, we may as well flip a coin right now. Yeah. But like both of us were so stubborn that, that we're like, we're going to play three hours a game. We don't even know. Cause we wanted to really win. Yeah. And, uh, I think that that happens sometimes too, but I just like that WPT realizes that it's the player's decision, you know, that it should be up to them um, if they want to play a very expensive heads up, sit and go, or if they want to chop it up and just like take the money home. For sure. I mean, uh, I'm glad that we have the option at least. And you still have the option to do the back alley deal if you want to, but if you want to make it more professional, you, you have that option. And, you know, we see in poker a lot of times when one you know, series makes a decision, others follow suit. So mm -hmm. interesting to see if WSOP will do it this year. Obviously there's a player of the year points factor and stuff, yeah. different things going on with that series. So, and it's much bigger. So, you know, we'll see, but it's, you know, Matt Savage, Matt Savage is really a pioneer in just making 
things. It's making so. it more um, by committee. It used mm. to be like tournament directors are like my way or the highway. Like mm. this is how it's going to be. And I feel like it's a trend lately um, with Poker Boss at Aria also. Um, just saying, hey, uh, here's how we feel. And this is how it's been going for a long time. Um, is the like tide changing a little bit? Like, do you guys prefer this way instead? And letting players actually have feedback um, and, and meaningful feedback. They're like Rob Young also with all mm. the things that he asks on Twitter. Um, players actually get a vote for how their money is going to be divvied up and, and whatever. Um, and it's safer for players too because yeah. I, I had a friend who chopped heads up for a big amount of money. It was at Borgata. Um, it was probably two or three in the morning mm. with a bunch of random people railing it. And they chopped so they couldn't get a check that said 180K, 120K. Mm -hmm. um, it had to be that first place got it in cash so that first place could pay second place the money that they chopped for because everyone just turned their head turned and looked the other way and said okay no chops happening we're putting it in the right. blog is whatever and then so everyone is seeing how this is happening and like it's in front of everyone that like thousands of dollars are being handed over and i'm like these people have to drive home they have to walk to the parking lot yeah um it's definitely in the player's best interest to be able to take their money and check and not be so robbable yeah so i mean if if that's a factor alone i mean they need to make this decision to let chops happen definitely well i'm glad to see it glad to see things changing mm -hmm. so we're voting good for poker i think it's good for poker yeah, yeah. overall i think it's good it's a little bit less glamorous but we're not in the wild west anymore we have to we can't just be shooting people for <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. I wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good point. Um, yeah, although I do kind of wish I was alive for poker when it was like we that. We wouldn't be allowed to play. But you don't think so? <laughs> I don't think so. I think that, like, looking back uh, with, like, Barbara Enright and some of the pioneers, like, the women pioneers in poker, um, I don't think we were quite as welcome back in the day. Mm. I think they, I don't know. Because it was the Wild West, you'd beat people up over debts and stuff. Like, I don't think anyone's going to, like, yeah. break your kneecaps or anything. You know, you're not fair game, so. <laughs> Man, that would have been a fun time. <laughs> so anyway, I think uh, I think that wraps up our good for poker. If we agree, it's a lot shorter of a segment. It's you a know? lot shorter. Um, we're definitely going to have some disagreements going forward on some issues. Um, I'm always combative. My boyfriend <laughs> loves it. So I like to be combative and argumentative. So, but this time we happen to agree because I think that this is um, just good for everybody all around. So, yeah. And uh, we up. decided that for our good for poker, or bad for poker segment, that if we ever completely disagree, that crouton will be the tiebreaker. We'll just put yes. a treat on each side, whichever one heats first is the winner. Yes. He likes that. Good for crouton, <laughs> not bad for crouton. So uh, I think that's it. That wraps up our episode. I don't know if you guys want to still send in hand histories. We didn't get to any yet yeah. for the As Played section. Do it. It's as played at runitonce.com. Um, and yeah, we'll get to some of your punts, not just the Chris Kruk punts. Yes. Send those in and uh, back next time. Thanks, guys.